Hey, Nick here. I'm uh, going to do a deck profile today. Uh, if you do hear some noise in the background, uh, I do apologize. Uh, we have some people working on the property, so you might hear some uh, uh, noise. Anyway, uh, the deck profile today will be my premium Bermuda Triangle Riviera deck. Uh, normally this weekend, if you're seeing this video, would have been the uh, Anaheim Spring Fest. So, because it has been canceled and Premium Collection 2020 uh, is not out, uh, this would have been the last uh, time I could use this current build. This would have been the deck I would have taken to the tournament. Anyway, let's go into the card list uh, for the grade threes. Of course, you play uh, four copies of Riviere. I do need one more SP, so uh, it's unfortunately the uh, play set does not match. But four of the V-Series Riviere. Uh, pretty much what this card does, if you don't know, is that when you place it on the Vanguard spot, uh, counter blast one, discard, draw two. And what's nice is that the effect activates when placed, so you can use the skill before the stride. And then it also has a Vanguard skill that says that after it battled, uh, after the battle it attacked, discard two cards, ride up to one Riviere in its card name from your hand as standing, and it gets minus one drive. Uh, what that means is that you can get another attack in. Also, if you want to be a little cheesy, uh, if you were to go first, you can ride up to your grade three, and then you can ride back down to grade two if you are playing uh, the grade two game. So this way you can get your gift marker and you ride down a two and your opponent can't stride. So this has some uh, versatile uses. Obviously, if uh, when you play in premium, you're not really attacking with your grade three Vanguard that often unless your deck is built to do that. So. That's my grade three, Riviere. I also have four copies of uh, Spirited Star Choice, or Choice. Uh, pretty much, it's an enabler for multiple attacks in a single turn. It also lets you do your superior ride to your grade three Riviere. And if you happen to ride from a two, or uh, if you rode from a grade three using this effect, then uh, you can also superior stride. So, uh, pretty much, it's kind of like a, a, a weaker version of the whole uh, superior right Ezel thing that was uh, fun back in the day. Uh, Ezel was able to superior ride quickly and superior stride. So, Bermuda also had it, but it's definitely not as good as uh, Gold Paladin, but it was an option for uh, Bermuda for sure. Uh, and again, like I said, it enables multi-attacks. And then the last of the grade threes, I have, what's her name? Animated Rooting Mar Margin. I think that's how you pronounce that. Three copies. It's just a support card. Uh, if your Vanguard is top idle Riviere, then you can discard this from your hand to uh, grab a Riviere from your drop zone. Uh, I'll also draw a card. So a uh, pretty decent support card. Uh, even if you stride into something else and your Vanguard is top idle uh, Riviere, you will still get to use her effect. So uh, that can come in handy. Now for the grade 2 lineups, I play four copies of Maturity Talent Selna. I think that's how you pronounce that. It's another uh, multi-attack enabler uh, for your turn. Pretty much when your Riviere Vanguard attacks, uh, you may return this card to your hand and then you can call this back. Uh, what makes that part important is that it's before the drive checks, it's just when Riviere declares its attack. Uh, it also has a hand skill that says that if you are on Mermaid Idol Riviere, you can superior ride a Super Idol Riviere from your uh, deck. Uh, not really an, uh, something you would do often, but it is an option for you, and if it uh, goes off, it can win you the game, but you are minusing pretty hard if you uh, do that skill. Next, we play three 
of the V series Super Idol Riviere and one copy of the uh, original Super Idol Riviere. Now, the purpose behind one copy versus uh, you know making them all the same is that a uh, Super Idol Riviere original is not that great on the rear guard for obvious reasons. It doesn't have a rear guard skill while the V series uh, Riviere does. So the reason um, you wanna do a few mix match, you can probably do two of the Super Idol originals and then two of the V, whatever you want, whatever fits your play style. But uh, I found that having one copy of the V series, I mean one copy of the original is good enough because uh, you're pretty much searching for it anyway. Uh, you can be unlucky if you lose it to the damage. Uh, if you happen to go first and your opponent attacks you. Uh, in general, most people kind of damage deny. That's the format we're in. Uh, people would damage deny this deck because uh, if they kind of studied it, they know that if you give us counter blast, you can just do the superior ride. So they don't do that. But if they do, uh, well, that's all I can say. So if you do lose this, it's very unlucky. Uh, the grade two pretty much has the rear guard skill that says that uh, when your Vagon with Riviera and his card name is placed, you can stand this unit. So if you're doing some early game rush and you happen to get off the uh, grade three Riviera attack combo, that's pretty common it's in the standard format, then you can get an extra attack. And then our last grade twos, I uh, use three uh, speakers. This is a GB skill that says that if it's boosted, and it attacks a vanguard, uh, you can counter blast, bounce a card, call it back, and it gains 3k. So it's another uh, multi-attack enabler, uh, but it does require uh, boosting, so keep that in mind. This card can probably be changed out uh, for other cards, um, but I found that uh, Spica uh, works the best so far. For our grade one line up, it's going to be pretty simple again. Uh, we have four of the V series uh, Mermaid Idol Riviere. Pretty much what this card allows you to do is that it just helps you add uh, more pieces to your hand. Uh, the way that the grade one is set up, maybe I'll just show it in context, I'll show you what the grade ones are all together. I also have four uh, Courage and I play one copy of uh, uh, Freya. So pretty much in practical senses, you are playing nine uh, grade one Mermaid Isle Riviers. So uh, in your opening hand, you want to have courage uh, because pretty much her skill allows you to search for Riviere. Uh, and that way then you can use Revere skill to ride over Courage and get the plus going. Uh, if you are unlucky and you have no choice and to use Freya, that's fine too because it will also get the job done. Because the other grade ones, I only have two more grade ones in the slot and they are uh, non Revere units, which is uh, Kura and Honolly. Uh, Kura is just a Soul Blast 2, Counter Charge 2. It's a tech card. It's one of those situations where uh, if you have it and you get to use the skill, you'll be very happy, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much, but you're, you're, you'll be glad that it's there. And then Honolly for the uh, multi-attack decks if you're getting uh, spammed out like that. But the reason, again, the grade one is so important is because you're practically playing nine copies of Riviere. So the deck itself is very consistent. Of course, you can get unlucky, but in general, you'll mulligan all your cards for Courage because Courage would help you fetch for Riviere. Riviere will then help you get the grade two or three if it comes up. Uh, again, you know, there is also variance. You can definitely get unlucky, but that's part of the game. Uh, but I found that this is the most surefire way for you to not get uh grade locked or whatnot or grade stuck whatever you want to call it so that's the grade one lineup 
the grade zero starter is going to be the original Riviere. Uh, again, the reason you're going to be using the original, it's actually required if you want to use uh, Courage as a grade one. Pretty much when you ride a Riviere grade one unit, the uh, Actually, it's a specific name, so there's no, but there's no other green one reviews. But if you write Mermaid Idol Revere on top of this unit, uh, you look at the top seven cards, add the grade two or three Revere. Uh, you normally don't want to ride the grade one Revere over this. You want to go on to Courage, but this at least uh, helps you get a plus uh, if you have to uh, ride the grade one Revere. And then if you happen to have no choice but to ride this, uh, you actually don't ride this from uh, your normal ride phase. It, you, you use this skill from your hand. So you would just, when you start your game, and if this is your, you know, you have no choice to use this card, you pass your ride phase, then you use the skill. So this way, this goes in soul, you ride the grade one, and then you can get the starter skill. So no choice on that. So that's the grade zero starter. And for the trigger lineup, uh, a little greedy, but also it's pretty simple. It's gonna be like, um, based on what our meta is. So I use four draw PGs, four the series heals, eight crits. So this is four of the draw crits and four vanilla crits. Uh, pretty much because of the power we're seeing, you need the higher power count. Uh, plus, because Ange, uh, you know, this is not in the deck, so you don't need any of the, a lot of the GB cards or, uh, any, you know, anything that's from the original sets. So you don't really uh, need it right now. Uh, of course, when Premium Collection drops, uh, the deck is going to be drastically different. I have a few deck builds already for Premium Collection. I'll probably do those profiles uh maybe after BCS, or if uh, Riviere is not the correct deck to use for a BCS, then I might show the deck profile for that. But anyway, that is the main deck. Now for the G-Zone, you do have a lot of flexibility uh, because in general, you're only gonna go into a couple of strides and win. That's just how premium is uh, set up right now and uh, of course, you want to play a long game if you want to enjoy, but the uh, if you're in a competitive tournament, you kind of just want to beat face and uh, call it a day. So in general, the two uh, stride units you'll be using back-to-back -back and win is going to be the Progenitor Dragon, uh, Valenarina. Pretty much, uh, when your opponent's Guardian is placed, you discard a Grade 1 or less card from hand and retire that Guardian. So if you uh, were able to rush pretty hard or uh, you know that your opponent's hand size isn't that great, you go into one Ballonarina, kill them. If you don't, then you can just go into another. Because once you have one Ballonarina flipped, then you can strike for free and then you can just stride into the next Ballonarina. Uh, in general, that tends to win the game on the first Ballonarina stride. But hey, stuff happens. Maybe your opponent opens good or... Uh, your opponent also have a bunch of perfect guards because Ballonarina does not negate effects. So do keep that in mind. Uh, at the last uh, premium BCS I attended, uh, my opponent had the nuts and had four, three or four uh, perfect guards, which I knew he had two, but oh well, you know, I didn't realize uh, he, his hand was pretty stacked. Now for the other strides, you can uh, mess around with, but in general, uh, you're gonna follow the same game plan. You're gonna play uh, an X amount of the Riviere strides. I play three, uh, you wanna play at least one so, so you can do the superior stride. Uh, pretty much, you never really do the effect, but if it happens, your opponent is definitely caught off guard uh, because there is a little bit of setup required to use this card. Uh, pretty much is an axe skill that's counter blast, flip a copy, uh, and then based on the uh, your soul, uh, if you have a bunch of riviers in your soul pile, you can give your rear guards 5k pumps, and 
If you have three or more face-up cards in the G-Zone, you can draw a card. And this unit gains 10k in a crit. So, it's uh, useful. It's a pretty good skill. But it's probably something you won't uh, do often. So, uh, definitely fun to catch your opponent off guard with this. Next, we play two copies of Shushu Popular Favorite Turia. Honestly, this is probably one of the best uh, stride cards Bermuda have. Uh, if Ballon Arena play is not going to win it, or uh, if you notice your opponent has quite a few uh, perfect guards, you might want to just stride into Turia instead. Uh, I'll go into the combos a little bit later, but I just want to present that I play two copies of Turia. And then I also play two copies of Livia. Uh, actually, this took a while to get, so it's pretty nice. You can probably don't have to use Olivia. Like I said, the G-Zone is quite flexible because you're not really striding a bunch. Uh, but in general, Olivia allows more multi-attacks. So uh, that's always good. And then I play one copy of Ange. Uh, in case if there is a Link Joker matchup uh, or if you need more cards because this is a quad drive uh, Vanguard. And then you play one copy of Megiddo. Uh, never ever really go into it. It's definitely more of a, a fail safe if things are bad. Uh, in general, I probably would never stride into it because you also lose your G-Zone if you don't win. So uh, you'll be pretty behind if that happens. So, uh, But it is neat. Uh, you can uh, pretty much uh, spam your force marker. So that's what you do. For the G-Guardians, uh, very simple. And then the thought process is... Uh, uh, there's a reason behind each card. Uh, Citron, this allows you to guard, obviously, um, a decent number because it does guard higher than your heal triggers. And it allows you to call one grade one or greater card from your hand to the rear guard, which is actually required if you want to get that pump. Uh, in general, you use this to superior call Honolly if you're getting hit with a bunch of multi-attacks. And if you are against new Batama Dominate type uh, decks, this will help you get around that. Uh, you can call over units and whatnot. Um, Sandy from the uh, GB um, G Guardians. So you do have to have a card face up already to use her skill. But it's just a higher shield count. Uh, originally you'll be playing a bunch of Ellie's, but because uh, she is currently uh, not allowed in the deck, so uh, she's your high guard count G guardian. I also have one copy of Han and Han Leona. Uh, this is just more of a tech where, uh, just so you do keep in mind, its shield power will just be that of a heal trigger. It just gains 5k. But what you can do is you can grab a unit from your rear guard, put it into your hand, and then call, uh, call a uh, card from your hand to guardian. Uh, if it's the same card, it gets 5k. So if you happen to grab like a grade 3 and use the grade 3 to guard, then the grade 3 shield is like 5k. So you don't really want to do that. You mostly just want to use this to grab a card, put it back into your hand if you need it, and then call a card you don't need for obvious reasons, yeah. But you won't, it's only in fringe situations though. So like I said, it's more of a tech because uh, you never know what could come up. And then I have one uh, Dismal. Uh, this is just in case someone tries to attack your entire board. Or if you have uh, a grade 3 or grade 2 unit you want to protect uh, permanently for that turn. Um, because once you use Dismal, that unit can't get hit anymore. So that is the uh, G-Zone uh, uh, build. Let's get into a little bit of the combos. So the deck itself is very simple. Like I said, you just want to go into uh, Balan Arena and win. But in general, this is going to be your field layout. Mm. 
you just grab the cards that you're typically going to have. So this would obviously be the ideal situation. Uh, you can have either Selena or uh, Troyes on the board. Your Vanguard is Revere. You got some booster buddies. Uh, this is really nice if you're against uh, a removal deck too because she also uh, protects your rear guards from uh, getting chosen by your opponent's card effects. So it doesn't really matter who your grade 2s are or grade 3s are as long as one, it's one of those. Uh, in general, you are going to use Force 1 markers. So if you're playing super well, open the nuts, uh, you'll have a few Force markers throughout the game. Uh, in general, you want to put them on the rear guard spot uh, because uh, your vanguards are already going to be hitting for high numbers. Uh, so, in general, if you are on Valen Arena, you will go ahead, attack with these units, attack with Valen Arena, and then these would restand by paying the costs. Other way around is, as long as your opponent also doesn't hit defensive triggers too, obviously, uh, these two attack, Valen Arena attacks, these two go back into hand and then use Superior Call, and then you kind of uh, repeat that. Uh, like again, like I said, if they hit defensive triggers, uh, hopefully your force marker helps you get around that. That's why you want to spam those out. Um, and then even if they do hit a defensive trigger and your unit can still hit them in a sense, all you have to do is discard cards from your hand to uh, retire the guardians when your opponent uh, puts them down. So very simple strategy on that for Balan Arena. Now, if you go into Turia, it's almost a similar uh, setup. Uh, again, you want to go have these guys. I, these are definitely in the more better spot in this situation if you're on Turia, but the grade two cards work just as fine. But in general, you do have to have a full board to do this play. You pretty much attack, uh, without, uh, yeah, you just attack, 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 Turia skill. Uh, these three go to the bottom, and then these also restand, and you hit some triggers, whatever, uh, then attack, attack again, and then when this attacks, these can restand because uh, these are not hard once a turn. So let's go over that one more time because it was kind of confusing. So in this situation, what you would do is, assuming you, you know you got the effect, you got the soul, uh, this would attack, this would attack, this would attack, these would restand, do your drive checks, and then uh, return these three to the bottom, this would restand, these attack again, and then this attacks with one drive check, and then these would restand. So uh, it's a very strong play. Uh, if your opponent happens to have multiple PGs, Battle Arena is not going to help you win, Turia will. So, pretty much, I'm going to wrap up my video there. Uh, that is my Bermuda Triangle Premium deck profile. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on making the deck better, you know, definitely throw that in the comments section. I'd love to hear some of your ideas. Or if there's a combo that I missed and you happen to notice that my deck can do it, uh, let me know. Uh, but do keep in mind, though, when Premium Collection drops, uh, the deck's going to change drastically. Uh, to be honest, uh, so don't want to get too much into uh, what I think about premium collection. In general, Bermuda definitely got shafted with the whole uh, uh, what you call it, uh, the Highlander support card. So you didn't really get a new stride unit for uh, Riviere, but with Tempest Fear and uh, Zazan, uh, the deck is definitely going to be different, uh, especially the fact that. All your uh, other decks that you'll be facing against will be different. So this will have to change for sure. But anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, of course, subscribe, hit that like. And I'll see you guys in the next video.